Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to explain the large language models T5 and Flan T5 and how to use the open source models from Aglinface, which is an open source tooling for large language models and more. So what is T5? T5 stands for Text to Text Transfer Transformer and it's an encoder decoder model pre-trained on a multitask mixture of unsupervised and supervised tasks and for which each task is converted into a text-to-text -text format. T5 was first presented in 2020 in the paper Exploring the Limits of Transfer Learning with a Unified Text-to-Text -text Transformer. The idea behind it is that every task, including translation, question answering, and classification, is cast as feeding the model text as input and training it to generate some target text. And unlike Baird, which had only encoder blocks, and GPT-2, which had only decoder blocks, T5 uses both. T5 comes in different sizes and usually the larger is better. Just make sure that you have enough space before you download any of them. Now let's talk about uh, FLAN T5. FLAN stands for Fine-Tune Language Net. Uh, the FLAN T5 model is an encoder-decoder la large language model released in 2021, which has been specifically fine-tuned using instruction tuning. Instruction fine-tuning is a technique used to fine-tune LLMs. It trains the model using examples that demonstrate how it should respond to a specific instruction. The train set includes uh, many pairs of prompt completion examples, and in the training process, all the model's weights are updated. Flan T5 was trained on multitask prompt completion pairs, so this model is not only good for just one type of task. It has strong zero and few shot abilities and is very useful for many natural language type of tasks. Even without further fine tuning and with good prompt engineering, Flan T5 can perform even better than T5 with direct fine-tuning when there is a limited training dataset. FLAN T5 also comes in different sizes, where the small one is about 80 million parameters and the large one is about 11 billion parameters that can perform similar to other models with significantly more parameters. For example, GPT-3 that has 175 billion parameters. There are other models that Google has released uh, based on T5, and each one of them is good for different type of tasks or settings. So for example, MT5 is a multilingual uh, T5 model uh, and can be used for multilingual tasks. So that was a quick introduction to T5. Now let's see how we can use it in Python. I will start with T5 and later in this notebook, we will see how to use Flan T5. So first we need to install um, the transformers package from Hugging Face um, and sentence piece uh, because T5 tokenizer uses this package. Okay, now let's see how we can use this model for translation task using zero shot inference. So from transformers, uh, we import T5 tokenizer and T5 model and load the T5 base model and tokenizer. Note that it's important to use the same tokenizer as the model and not some other tokenizer because this tokenizer was the one that they used in the training process. So after doing that, we uh, specify the text uh, prefix, which is translate English to French, and then the sentence that we want to translate, how are you? Then 
uh, we tokenize the sentence and specify the return tensor parameter to be PT. That stands for PyTorch tensor. And, uh, and then we use it function generate that encode the input and feed the encoded Eden states via cross attention layers to the decoder that generates the decoder output, which is a sequence of encoded tokens. So in order to get the real sentence, we need to uh, decode this sequence using the tokenizer decode function. I also said this keep special tokens parameter to be true, so it will remove uh, special tokens in the decoding. And then you just can print the result. And now let's see how we can make a batch inference. Uh, that is a batch of sentences that we want to get their completion. So in this case, I want to translate these uh, three sentences, hello, how are you, and what's your name, uh, to French. So we tokenize a list of sentences uh, that for each one of them, I had the prefix, tax prefix, and we want to get PyTorch uh, tensors. And also we uh, had uh, padding true. Uh, that ped the sentences to the longest sequence in the batch with a special token so we can get in return a tensor object. Uh, now the gener generate function gets the input IDs as before. Here I also added the attention mask parameter. The attention mask is a value generated by the tokenizer to identify the input ID of the word that is useful and the input ID of the word that to be ignored. Uh, the attention value is zero or one. One represent useful uh, words and zero represent the words to be ignored. Then we use the function batch decode and pass the output sequences. And then you can just print and see then translated uh, sentences. All right. So as you can see, I've been using the um, T5 conditional generation module to load the model. Uh, but there are actually three options that you can use to load the model. T5 model, T5 for conditional generation, and T5 encoder model. T5 model is the basic implementation of T5 architecture it includes both the decoder and the decoder components, but without any task-specific heads. It only returns the raw hidden states of the decoder as output. T5 for conditional generation is a specific configuration of T5 model tailored for conditional generation tasks. It includes all the functionalities of T5 model, but is designed to handle tasks where the model needs to generate an output based on the provided input. This is particularly useful for tasks like language translation, summarization, and text completion. It's essentially a T5 model with pre-configured setting for conditional generation. Uh, and T5 uh, an encode model is a variant of the T5 architecture that only includes the encoder components. Uh, it is useful when you only need to encode input text and use it contextual embeddings for downstream tasks. For example, you might want to use T5 encoder model for tasks like text classification or text similarity, where you don't require the decoder for uh, generating text. Uh, these uh, three modules are for when you are working with PyTorch. If you work with uh, TensorFlow, uh, you need to use uh, T5, TF T5 model, TF 
T5 for conditional generation and TFT5 encoder model. And if you work with FLAX framework, you should work with FLAX T5 model, FLAX T5 for conditional generation, and FLAX T5 encoder model. Okay, now let's see how to make inference calls with um, FLAN T5. So it's actually uh, pretty similar to what we saw with T5, and we can use the same Python libraries, but I will head here a few new things that are good to know when using T5. So let's start with importing the libraries that we are going to use. So this time, instead of T5 tokenizer and T5 for conditional generation uh, libraries, we import auto model for a sequence uh, to sequence LM and auto tokenizer. Uh, the difference between the auto version to the direct T5 libraries is that auto model for sequence to sequence uh, can be used to load any sequence to, to sequence model that has a language modeling on top. These include BART, uh, Pegasus, T5, and more. So when you load T5 using auto model for sequence to sequence LM, it will actually load T5 for a conditional generation model behind the scene. Uh, so the same goes for if you load a different model from AgintPace, such as BERT. Uh, this way, you don't have to worry about importing the right library. So besides those two, we are also going to use uh, generation config that will help us set base parameters for the generation call. Okay, now uh, we load Flanty5 base model and its tokenizer. Remember that it's important to use the same tokenizer that the model was trained on. Uh, that is why I don't use the tokenizer I used for T5. Uh, we also gonna uh, set generation uh, config object. So here you can control the length of the output the generations uh, strategy used and more. Here I'm going to set the max new tokens to be 20 and the do sample parameter to be true. This will allow the model to be more creative, uh, but I'm going to also set a temperature which will control the amount of creativity that, that I want the model to be. Now let's generate a uh, completion. So this time the task will be to extract uh, the product name from a product review text. Uh, then I'm going to use the same function that we used in T5 to tokenize uh, the sentence, generate uh, a completion and to decode the output sequence. As you can see, the model completion was uh, Samsung Galaxy as seven, so it did recognize that the product was a phone, but it added a new information that wasn't in the text. The review didn't specify which phone they were using. So in order to fix this, you could specify in the prompt to extract text only from the review and also set a lower temperature. Now let's talk about um, training a T5 model. Training or fine-tuning in T5 model can be a powerful approach to adapt the model for specific natural language processing tasks or to train the model on a specific data set that you have. Here are some important things to know and the general steps needed for training or fine-tuning a T5 model. So number one, tax formulation. One crucial aspect of training or fine-tuning a T5 model is formulating the task in a text-to-text -text format. This means converting both input and output into text sequences, where the input describes the task and the output is the target sequence. Number two, tokenization. T5 uses tokenization to convert text into smaller units for processing. Just remember to use the same tokenization process as used during pre-training for consistency. Three, pre-trained weights. 
fine tuning starts with a pre-trained T5 model that has been trained on a large corpus of general text. You can use a pre-trained weight to initial, initialize the model before fine tuning. Fine tuning parameters. You will need to set hyperparameters for fine tuning, such as learning rate, batch size, number of epochs, etc. Proper tuning of these parameters is important to, for uh, good performance. Number five, resource requirements. Fine tuning a T5 model can be computationally intensive, especially if you are working with large models and datasets. The resource requirements for fine-tuning a T5 model depend on several factors, such as the model size, the size of the dataset, the, the batch size, the number of training epochs, and the available hardware. So that was it for today's video. Thanks for watching.